at this time of fellowship. As we head into devotion, Father, I do pray for your uh, guidance and your leading, Father, uh, to speak uh, with clarity and for uh, uh, in my mind as well to be peace and in your heart to be peace, Father God. Let your word, uh, let your truth, Father God, be what's planted in the hearts of the listeners. Prepare their hearts as well as those who are listening, Father, both here and online. May, may truth find itself in good soil. And if it's not of good, uh, but if it's not of truth, Lord, it'll find itself in deaf ears. These things I humbly ask and pray in the glorious name of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, again, family, greetings. In the name of our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ, again, great to be in fellowship with you all this morning. This morning, we're continuing on with Psalm 61. So just a brief summary of this psalm and the verses that we've already covered. And we know that this psalm was written by King David. Uh, another thing to note is this context of this psalm is unknown. All that we do know about this psalm is that it's written when uh, King David fled from either his son Absalom or... Uh, King Saul. So we know that he is not in Israel during this time he's writing the psalm. We started un slowly unpacking verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 61. As it reads there, hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From here in verse 1, we find the psalmist again in prayer, asking God to hear his cry or hear his prayer. As it says there, hear my cry, take heed, O Lord, listen to my cry. David's situation is again taken to the Lord in prayer. Not only he asks God to hear his cry, but to attend to his prayer. Attend means to incline. So he's saying to the Lord, incline, O Lord, listen to my prayer. Pay attention, hearken, listen, or hear and listen and pay attention to my prayer. When we get to verse 2 of Psalm 61, we find the prayers of King David. It reads there, from the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Mm -hmm. We found a couple of things in this verse. The first thing uh, where it is where he is praying from. It reads there, from the end. So when we unpack this word in its original text, um, it means the outskirts or the borderlands. And we also unpack the word uh, the sentence word uh, word of the earth so from the end of the earth so we unpack the of the earth part which was the second thing we found in this verse this means a piece of ground country territory <clears throat> or the uh, outskirts of israel or canaan so he we know that he is crying from the outskirts of israel we know that he's um crying um from a place of being away from his homeland then he reads but then it says when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than i mm -hmm. studies suggest that david being distant from his homeland also feels himself to be distant from god that his heart now when we look at the word heart that's the understanding the thinking the conscience the mind these things for king david was growing weak or was overwhelmed was growing feeble was growing faint David realizing that his heart can no longer be trusted to help him or to strengthen him, um, that he can no longer rely on himself. Mm -hmm. He cries out to God, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Mm -hmm. Lead me to the rock that is stable, that is strong, that I can rely on to carry me through. The application we took away from this was the theme of prayer. And we read from, we read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Now to add on, um, and, and I was talking to Brother Vai Vai, he mentioned also another good, uh, another good application uh, for us when we're outside us, uh, the outskirts of our faith, uh, when, our, when we feel as if we're no longer closer to God, um, that we are like sheep that strayed away, that we can pray uh, for God to lead us to the rock that is higher than I, that he will sustain us, that he will lead us, that he will rescue us. Now we find ourselves in Psalm 61, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 61, verses 3 and 4. And it reads there, Psalm 61, verses 3 and 4. 
For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Mm. Now we're going to look at the uh, verse 3. We're going to look at verse 3. Then we're going to go to verse 4. <coughs> it says that for you have been a shelter for me. The word shelter comes from the Hebrew word makesa. Makesa, which means refuge, a shelter, uh, either from rain or storm, but also from danger or falsehood. <coughs> King David does well to recall the many times God has become his shelter. He finds his confidence in God in this time of distress, of being overwhelmed. David recalls the many times God has been faithful in his life. <clears throat> David is either being pursued by King Saul. Oh, so when David was pursued, pursued by King Saul, um, he trusted in God and he left unhurt and unscathed. When he fled from his son Absalom, again, he was able to sleep in peace, knowing that there was enemies around him. <clears throat> so David had built this confidence in God. He knew that God would protect him. He trusted in God. So David is recalling these moments. In that word there where it says, you have been. So he's recalling these moments of when God has been faithful in his life. There are two Psalms where we see David being protected and sustained. Um, where he puts his trust in the Lord. These two scriptures, if we can, if I can have Brother Oli, Brother Oli, please read Salamo ono loa fai upu efitu. Salamo ono loa fai upu efitu. Salamo ono suma loa fai upu efitu. Olo o ia tua lo o tanga maro umano. Olo o papa maro si maro umano. Olo o ia tua zi. Um, Brother my <coughs> wife, I can have you read in English, please, and I'll read it in top. Uh, Psalm 62, verse 7. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Psalm 62, verse 7. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Psalm 62, verse 7. In God is my salvation and my glory. The other one I want to look into is Psalm 3, verse 5. Um, if we can all turn to Salamu Tolu, Fai Upu E Lima. Salamu Tolu, Fai Upu E Lima. And if I can have our Samoan family, please read uh, Salamu Tolu, Fai Upu E Lima. Ia. <laughs> Um, Sister Ao, if I can have you read Psalm uh, chapter 3, verse 5 in English, please. Psalm 3, verse 5. I lay down and sleep. I awoke, and the Lord sustained me. Amen. Amen. Psalm 3, verse 5. I lay down and sleep. I awoke, and the Lord sustained me. Amen. Amen. Na kuhake he kosi hova o kune fako olunga au. E ikai te o mana vahe ki ha mano i kakai, ne yongo e nao kapui au ta kakai. These two psalms have the common theme of protecting and sustaining. Mm -hmm. King David recalls these times and trusts that God will protect them and sustain them as his refuge and a sustainer. King David adds on to his remembering or him recalling the blessings of the Lord. So not only you have been my shelter, but you're also a strong tower from the enemy. That strong tower is none other than God. Amen. As David recalls these things, <clears throat> his trust in God is strengthened. As David recalls these things, he learns to keep close to God. As he recalls these things, he is reminded of God's faithfulness and protection over his life. David has found that David has found that rock that is higher than I, the rock that is stable than everything happening around me. My heart is faint, it can't be trusted. My strength is feeble, it's not reliable. My thinking is faint, it can't lead me. The rock that is higher than I is the strong tower that can protect them, that can also shelter them. May we find security in recalling the mighty things of the Lord and what he has done in our lives. I'm sure many of us have our own 
stories that we can recall to the moment where God has either saved us from or protected us or sustained us. God will continue to be a shelter for those who trust in him. The only form of absolute truth is in the word of God. Isaiah 40 verse 8 reads, The grass withers and the flowers <coughs> fall, but the word of God stands forever. That forever family is eternity. That forever family is ongoing. It's everlasting. It's everlasting. So now we move on to verse 4. Verse 4 says, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. <coughs> now this term, I will abide. David's almost saying, I know where my safety is. I know where my shelter is. Therefore, I will abide. This term abide comes from the Hebrew word ger, ger, which means to abide, to dwell, inhabit, or remain. Mm -hmm. David understands this concept of, the, of dwelling. As uh, we read in Psalm 23, it was a personal psalm to David. Here David says, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. Now the word tabernacle comes from the Hebrew word or hell, or hell which means a tent or a dwelling place, a home or the sacred tent of Yahovah. Now the term I will dwell or abide, David uses quite often in the psalm. He knows and he understands this term of dwelling, this term of abiding, this term of living. There are times in King David's distress that he will run to God, he will abide in God. And it's also, we read in the Psalms, it was David's desire to abide or to dwell in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There are two scripture references again that confirms David's relationship of dwelling and abiding in the house of the Lord. If I can get uh, Brother Vai Vai please to read Psalm 23 verse 6. Psalm 23 verse 6. Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We see the concept there that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. I will enjoy the Lord's company. Mm. I will enjoy his hospitality. I will enjoy his protection. Mm. Another one, if I may. Psalm 27, verse 4. Han, if you can read Psalm 27, verse 4, please. Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord, <clears throat> that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord mm -hmm. and to inquire at this time. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. That's a lovely... Um, Psalm, yeah. Psalm 27 verse 4, we see and we read there that the one thing that King David desires, the only thing that he desires is to dwell in the house of the Lord, yes. to be with the Lord, to enjoy his company, yeah. to behold yeah. the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Yeah. The word tabernacle is usually associated with the dwelling place of God or where the presence of God is. King David uses this uh, concept of tabernacle in regarding to dwelling with the Lord, enjoying his hospitality um, and sure protection. Now know that this is not an overnight stay or a, 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 or a day stay, this is a forever stay. Um, the word forever comes from the Hebrew word alone, alone, which means everlasting, indefinite, unending, eternity. So David is saying, I will dwell in the house for Eternity. I will dwell in the house and this will be everlasting and this will be unending. That's not all. Not only does David desire to dwell in the house of the Lord, but it reads there also, I will trust in the shelter of your wings. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Whatever David's situation is, he has been in this place before where he trusts in the Lord. He confides in the Lord. He has hope in God that he will be protected. <coughs> so we, uh, so verse 4 ends with these words, under the shelter of your wings. Now I had to look this analogy up um, because I was asking myself, why this analogy? Why this? What does this mean, under the shelter of your wings? 
and with the help illumination of the scriptures by the Holy Spirit, this concept is one of protection. This concept is one of protection. Mm. If we can imagine a hen who has chicks, yeah. the concept is that when there is danger, the chicks run immediately underneath the wings of the hen. Mm. Um, and while they're there, the hen uh, uh, still looks out or is on guard for danger or for threats that's still around. Mm. But while the hen is doing that, uh, the chicks are safely tucked under the wings of the hen. But not only that, the chicks are also in warmth. Mm -hmm. The chicks are also in comfort. Yes. And the chicks fully trust mm -hmm. in the protection mm -hmm. of the hen. Mm -hmm. With that imagery in mind, David here paints that very same picture. When there is trouble, when there is danger, he trusts and runs to the protection of God. Mm -hmm. Under his wings, he finds security, <clears throat> trust, comfort, and warmth. He fully trusts in the Lord and his protection over him. Now what does this mean for us believers today? May we continue to abide in the Lord. Now how can we do this? By the reading and meditation of God's word. Um, Psalms chapter 1 verse 2. Now why the word of God? Why, why do we as believers or why do we as Christians uh, trust wholly in the word of God? There are many reasons but for if I can just give you one reason because you can trust in his word unlike everything in this world that's temporary everything in this world that's coming to an end mm -hmm. the word of god is the only truth that will yes. last Amen. forever yes. again isaiah 40 <clears throat> verse 8 the grass withers the flowers fall mm -hmm. but the word of our god stands yes. forever mm -hmm. i will end with psalm 61 verse 2 when my heart is overwhelmed Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Mm -hmm. It's not in our strength that will sustain mm -hmm. us. It's not in our power that we will push through. It's only through the sustainable firm rock, which is our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. where we will be strengthened to continue to run this race unto glory. I will pray and end our devotion time, then I'll pass it over to Brother my wife. Uh, let's acknowledge and praise the Lord for his faithfulness over our lives and for his grace and for the word of God that continues to sanctify us. So let us pray. Um, Father, once again, we come before you with a grateful heart, Lord. Yes, we come thanking you, Father God, as we learn from the psalm uh, from King David, Lord, that when our hearts overwhelm, Lord, that you will lead us to the rock that is higher than I, Father. Let us not trust in our own strength in our own smarts, Lord, or our own doing, Father God, but let us trust in you, Lord. As your word says in Isaiah 40, verse 8, Father, that it's your word uh, that lasts forever. It's your word that endures forever. Um, so we ask that you continue to draw us closer to your word, help us grow our desire to, for your word, Lord, uh, as we know that it's only your word and your word alone that will sustain us in this world, Father. In all things, Lord, we give you glory, we give you honour, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.